former National Women's Organizer of the NPP, two-time former Minister, Gender, Children and Social Protection on issues relating to her rejection of the ambassadorial position that President Kofado offered her, plus the school feeding program problems. Take a look. And I have set up a foundation called the Henry Jabba Memorial Foundation in memory of my mm, late, late father. father. Yes, and so that is what occupies me now. I see. Is, is that the reason why you, you, you rejected the ambassadorial position offered to you by the, by the president in 2018 to be ambassador to Italy because you've retired from politics? <laughs> no, it was um, long overdue. I've been working in this area of serving Ghana in development, rural development, and then the political scene since uh, 1998. Mm. So um, I needed to spend time with my family. I have four children. Right. And so it was very important that um, I focus on them as well. In my, that is what happens to women mm. when you are pursuing your own career and other ambitions. Something will lose out. And I found that was my family. And right. so it was important to spend time with them. And I was getting close to 60 at the time. Mm. So it was a good time to um, come out of politics. And also, I had lived in England for about 16 years, and I was not interested in living outside Ghana again. I so see. Those so, were my reasons. So the, your, your, your political responsibilities was depriving you of the family time it was having yes, it was yes. having a negative impact yes, on your family yes. I was, the politics i wasn't i was absent i wasn't there i was traveling all over the country and other places to mm. get our message out to mobilize the women and young people for my party and that mm. is really consuming in terms of time in terms of everything I see. Do you, you have any moments of, of regret serving the MPP? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was a privilege. Mm. How many people get to be a women's organizer? Right. And I was a women's organizer twice. Indeed. How many people get, how many women's organizers have become ministers of state? And look, when I came to this business of women's organizer, the election of 2010, mm -hmm. I was the only woman out of the 10 elected officers. It tells you how the people felt about me. To vote for me, I didn't know much about politics at the time. Mm. And then the second, my second term, yeah. that's uh, 2014 14. in Tamale. I was the sole survivor well, of all well, my the other incumbents who had uh, contested in the 2010. Ten. I was the only one who was elected. All the others lost. That is a huge responsibility. And uh, I'm really very grateful to mm. my party members for that honor. For me, it's a privilege that they did to me. And mm. I will always appreciate that of them. Indeed. To have that sense of, um, give me that sense of responsibility. It's a huge responsibility to True. be the sole survivor, to be the only woman amongst 10 elected officers. And so I have no regrets at all. I, and I learned so much. I met all sorts of people that I would never have met. It was mm. a huge learning curve. Now, do you think that's what is also impacting on the, the decreasing number of women um, in politics? And that's one side of the conversation. And also, even when the political parties make the effort to try and encourage women to get there by reducing filing fees and other things, you still don't have a lot of women um, getting into political positions. I mean, they just ended NDC primaries. Just a few women were able to, to get through and, and be elected. So what's, what's really the challenge? Well, before I go there, I want to congratulate all the women who won and I want to congratulate all Ghanaian women. Women have come far. It's not as bleak as it looks like. Once upon a time, there were no women in parliament at all, and True. women didn't work. But now we have 40 women. That's the highest in the history of this country. We have over 240 something in the assemblies. Mm -hmm. And so it is a step forward, but the gap is so huge that 
you need a whole hour for us to talk about that issue. Mm. But to summarize, we have a parochial system in Ghana where there is a predominance of the males in leadership. Mm -hmm. And so the cultural and traditional aspects of how we are brought up mm -hmm. makes it difficult for women to be seen in leadership, which is unfortunate because women are born leaders. It's the woman, the mother, who coaches and mentors the children, like you, to be who you are. Indeed. Yes, even uh, Nelson Mandela had a mother. Pele had a mother. You know, Bill Gates has a mother. Mm. Everybody in this world was born by some woman. And that woman would have brought that child and nurtured that. That is leadership. Oh. So somehow, as the world has progressed, and then uh, women were supposed to stay at home, whilst men went to war, go to work, and all of that. Fast forward, it is changing. Mm -hmm. And uh, women are, some women are breadwinners. True. So those things have been holding us back. And I say the time has come to drop them. In this world, anything that doesn't help you to accelerate your development is not worth carrying along. So those negative traditions and thinking that the woman is only good for the kitchen to be a hairdresser and a supporting actor, no, it won't buy, it will not wash now. But I want us to get back into some of the things that you're very passionate about. Mm -hmm. Some of the policies that you champion while, mm -hmm. while even as Minister for Gender, Children, and Social Protection, the school feeding program. Mm. School feeding. Yes. I mean, we're talking at a time when the caterers under this school feeding program mm. have not been paid for one whole year. These are th three terms. They went in the Ashanti region, for instance, went to the minister's office, the minister snapped them. I mean, you saw that video. Yeah. Looking at it and, and what they are going through, how did that get to you? Very unfortunate. Over 80% of those women were employed by me. You were employed by you? Yes. I'm the first uh, gender minister under the... School feeding government. program. First minister for gender, mm. children and social, social protection. protection. School feeding is just a small part of, of it. it. Uh -huh. And so I had that privilege to appoint them. And so it was to help them to get jobs, help them to create wealth to be able to earn an income. A lot of them are single parents and they're widows and what have you. And so when they are not being paid, that means that that purpose is defeated. And then they are supposed to cook a hot, nutritious meal. Mm -hmm. And the amount of 97 pesos is ridiculous. 97 pesos? Yes, it's ridiculous. During my time, when I came, it was 80 pesos. And mm -hmm. we went to cabinet and then for parliamentary approval and we took it to one CD. Then mm. they deducted 30 pesos as mm. tax. So it's now 97 uh, pesos. But how did you come to that kind of computation? You have, I mean, 97 pesos per child. Uh, how, what, what food can you cook with 97 pesos, yes, really? We asked for two CDs. And the government, through the negotiations, then brought it down to the one CD. And then, like I said, the tax then came in, which took out uh, 30 pesos. Mm. So it was something that was supposed to be done and then we would review it and move it up i see exactly but yeah. even with the one thing you tax it and took 30 percent from 30 the tax tax from it couldn't it have been tax exempt it could have been but i don't know why that came it came after i had left the I negotiation see. was for one city at the time uh -huh. and so it is unfortunate because Nobody can cook with 97 pesos. And then when you owe, it means that the person or the bank or whichever institution you've borrowed the money from will no longer give you money until you pay. Mm -hmm. That means that you are overwhelmed with indebtedness. And you Absolutely. cannot continue to cook the food. Mm -hmm. And so it is a triple jeopardy. And um, I have said it once, I've said it twice, and I'm saying it again on your platform. Government should stop pretending to pay the caterers. You should stop pretending to pay yes, the caterers. Yes, and the caterers too would then stop pretending to cook a hot, nutritious meal. Because you cannot cook a hot, nutritious meal with 97 pesos. That's what I mean. Hmm. And so they must ensure that the, all the arrears is paid immediately. It must hmm. be paid immediately. No woman can wait. And you see, it's about uh, poverty alleviation, whereby the whole program of school feeding 
was to be sent to the very deprived poor areas. And then for those children to be able to go to school and they go to eat. And Not then they right. remain and become citizens and uh, mm -hmm. people like you, mm -hmm. journalists and what have you. And so when the food, especially in those areas, is not being given, that means that another purpose of it, there will not be attendance. It will reduce. True. And then staying in school too will reduce. And then mm. parents who cannot afford to give their children food will then say, then go to the farm. And mm. so that means that all of that that we wanted for education, and we keep talking about future leaders and what have you, if you don't invest in your children, there will be no future. And that is paramount, to have that legacy whereby we reduce and eradicate intergenerational poverty and mm -hmm. have a legacy whereby a Ghanaian child feels good about being a Ghanaian. In fact, there's evidence that the school feeding program actually improved enrollment levels in oh. the hard-to-reach communities. Mm -hmm. that, that is documented. Class sizes exploded. I was mm -hmm. working in Tumu at the time when uh, President Kufuor initiated it. And these are very deprived, I was working in 98 deprived communities. Class sizes exploded. Because of school feeding. Yes. People knew they would come to exactly. school and get something to eat. Very important. You know, when you are hungry, you know, you can't learn. And so when there is food, then you, they say the way to a man's <laughs> heart is through the stomach. Yes, the same it depends way on children. the kind of food you eat. By and the, the food must be good quality. Indeed. Uh -huh. must be good quality. So the issue of school feeding is something that really worries me, and I've mm. been speaking about it. And uh, I'm being told that the Minister of Finance has released some of the monies and that it takes some processes for it to then finally hit the accounts of the women. We are praying then and calling upon them to hasten those processes.